program with a tradition of excellence built on discipline. Teamwork. Mike Krzyzewski's leadership. And execution. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. The Duke Basketball Video Series provides you a special opportunity to learn many of the principles, techniques, drills, and teaching methods that are the backbone of the Blue Devils' success. Elton's right here, and he's created this amount of space for himself. Now, from inside Cameron Indoor Stadium, the home of this basketball powerhouse, here's Duke Basketball with Coach Mike Krzyzewski. We've enjoyed many championship seasons here at Duke University. The primary reason for those championships has been our great team man-to-man -man defense. Certainly, we love to play offense. Offense can be somewhat unpredictable. Great team man-to-man -man defense can be played game after game. Now, in our defense, we like to attack rather than react to our opponents. What does this do? It speeds them up. It gets them out of their normal areas of deployment, and it forces turnovers. God love turnovers because they produce high percentage baskets. Now, we have had many National Defensive Players of the Year here, but most of our kids are normal kids, some of whom can play individual defense at a high level, some not at that level. But collectively, when they learn our habits, they can play great team defense. Now I want to share with you the principles of our defense in this video. I also want to show you drills which develop the habits. The lectures and demonstrations you'll see come from one of my recent coaching clinics where team defense was emphasized. I'm going to show you individual drills which concentrate on footwork, balance, timing. We'll progress to multiple player drills and we'll end with five on five. The basic principles we apply to our team defense have remained the same through the years. Proper defensive stance. Pressuring the ball. Denying one pass away. Stopping penetration. Movement. Communication and vision. In this section of the clinic, we'll set up our half-court defense using these principles. Pressuring the ball here, okay? We want to pressure the ball, and Williams in a staggered stance, pressuring the ball. He's not stealing the ball, would like to influence the ball to go to the outside. We're not forcing to the outside, we're influencing. If they would like not to give them anything, but if they're going to go in any direction, would like to have them go there. Here, Trajan's denying the penetrating pass. So is Chris Burgess denying a penetrating pass. One pass away, one pass away, we would still be denying. So say, Corey, you're up here. Let, let's get just a little bit further. Up. Chris Carrawell now, come on, more in an operating area. That's it, right there. Okay. Chris Carrawell now would be what I would call in a closed stance. He cl he's close to the ball. He's chest to chest with his man. And we're looking to deny one pass away. Elton Brand is in the middle of the lane. If the ball, if his man is right on the block, Elton Brand can be in the middle of the lane. If Shane Battier was playing a wing, Elton, with the ball there, would be straddling the lane, okay? He's two passes removed, and he'd be able to see ball and man. Ball and man. That's what he's doing. If the ball went to Nate James on the wing, Elton now comes in the middle of the lane. Still ball and man. William Avery is denying, and now Chris Carrawell, 
is even in a little bit more of an open stance. He doesn't want Nate James to see him narrow. What he wants, Nate James, to see his chest. And he can still get back to Corey Maggette. Because right now, Nate James isn't just a man with the ball. It's not just looking at Trajan. He's looking at the help. If he sees Chris Carwell like this, he knows that he has more room. If he sees William Avery hugging his man, now he sees real estate. When you see real estate, you buy it. And you buy it with the dribble penetration move. William plays off of his man, but still in the passing lane. I show big here, I can still see this. And now there's le he's less apt to try to drive. Chris Burgess with the man at the, on the block or just above the block would be more side high. Ball you man. With the player here being so low, we don't care about him being on this side of him. We can cover this like this. If Matt Christensen was further up the lane, now Chris Burgess would go to that side. So that's a read the post defense has got to make. And this is the toughest part of the defense, is playing people in the post. It's the toughest part. OK, ball goes back out on top. Over the years, we've made some improvements in teaching our team man-to-man -man defense, primarily in how we defend the wing on the ball side. First of all, we try to stay in a closed stance all the time. We don't open up. Secondly, we try to communicate better to that man whether he has an occupied or an unoccupied low post. And finally, when that defender has to jump down inside, when the ball goes to a big guy, we put greater emphasis on the recovery to take away the three-point shot. When the ball is on the wing, what we are trying to do is make sure we are wide. We still have a heel-to-toe stance, a staggered stance. I'm square shoulders with them, but instead of putting my hands in front of me, I want to put my hands out here. OK? Not like this. Not like this. Here, I create a bigger space for him to attack. We have found, now that's a change in how we've, we've, uh, we've done things. We have found that when we put our hands here, the offensive player doesn't attack feet as much as he attacks hands. Because if I lean and put my hand here, I get just a little bit off balance. And that's what they end up attacking. So going for the ball here makes me small while he has the dribble. If he didn't have the dribble, we're all over him, of course. So right now, we're stopping penetration. Let me go through a couple of the things that we're doing different. First of all, let's say Matt Christensen's playing high. It's more of a 2-3 high set. What we used to do is if this man would come into the lane, Trajan would open up as the man would get to the lane. We'd just open up right there. We don't do that anymore. What we do is now stay closed. Do it again, Nate. Go right there. He stays close to him. Go right into the lane. Right here. OK? He's playing him and denying him the whole way. Because of this being open, we like to alert, go back on the wing. Elton Brand, who's playing his man all the way here, is talking to Trajan. And the thing he is telling him is, open, open, open post, you're open. Because how Trajan's denying right now can, have an inf it can be influenced by whether it's an open or closed post, OK? So we're talking about being open. OK, come on back down here. Another change we have is that if Nate comes here, 
and tries to get open, okay, right now it's impossible for Trajan to do his job if he has to see the ball. Trajan's job is to deny his man the ball. That's it. With the ball there and him doing this. That's his job. And so in order to do that, when he gets to this area, there's a lot of congestion. If Trajan was still trying to see the ball, he would end up opening up and lose sight of his man. So what Trajan does here is he fights in here, and now Chris Burgess is his eyes. He doesn't have to talk to Trajan Langdon. Right now, let's do that again, Trey. Okay, first of all, I'm saying, you got help, you got help, you got help. I'm giving you a lane. Come on, go on in, Nate. I'm giving you a lane. Right here, I don't care what Trajan's doing now. My job is to see for both of us, okay? I don't have to tell Trajan, you're okay, you're okay. It's useless talk. And the elimination of useless talk in setting up a defense is very, very important. I should be, if I'm Chris Burgess, now talking to the ball. You're okay, William, okay, I got help for you, you okay, okay. And Trajan's job, because I don't know what's going to happen, I don't care. Nate may go to the other side, okay? But if he comes back out, okay, Trajan then picks up sight of the ball again. He does not have to see the ball here. We're not going to get hurt by him not seeing the ball right there. And at one time, I said that you always see the ball, and that, we've changed that. In that situation, you don't, because you can't do your job if you do that. The other thing is, when the ball goes into Nate, okay, and then let's get, Chris Burgess gets caught behind, and now the pass is made inside, okay? Trajan jumps to the ball. His back is to the baseline. This is similar to what we've always taught. However, we have not made it until the last few years. Just your sole thought, your first initial thought, if that ball goes out. We've talked about closing out, but in this situation, we tell our players, you take away the three first, no matter what. No matter what. So when this help and recover move, get it right back in here, all it is is one step. But when he goes out, he has to come up high. And then if he came well, uh, William's got to be able to help on the penetration. Nobody can help him take away the three except Trajan. Just like inside, nobody's going to stop Nate from get, receiving the ball except Trajan. So we've kind of personalized that. And the offenses that we have encountered for a number of years, people like to force that congestion and then get out. And of course, p passing and relocating for the three is one of the best three-point shots you can take, okay? So in our defense, those are just some, a, a few of the subtle changes we've made. It shows you the, the full thing, you know, what we're leading up to. Okay, now how do we practice it? So our first drill, Quinn, you have the ball on top. We tell our guy not to contest, but then when Nate gets the ball, let's just go driving line. Let's do it a couple times. Let the, let the first pass go in. Good. Good, good. Good, good. All right, now hold it. Hold it. Good, good. In teaching your drills, don't get caught up all the time with it just being one-on-one -on -one in your driveway and someone's you know, going to beat you. Have an imagination. There are other people on the court. We're just breaking down this segment. Good, good. Good, good. All right, now hold it. Hold it. Now let's go contesting, denial. So Nate's in a contesting stance. 
And his stance, the wider he see, the, the wider he is, so he can go up and back, the better. His sole job is not to let Trajan get the ball. It's an unoccupied post. So Chris Carrawell is saying, you're open. It's open. It's open, Nate. It's open. OK, so now let's go to contesting. Here we go. Good, good, good. That's it. Okay. This drill reinforces several of our principles, including stance, denying one pass away, movement, and vision. Grab it, Nate. Good. Then what we would add is if Trajan does get the ball, go from contesting to contesting driving line. So while we're denying, do it again, he starts dribbling. Fake traps. Fake, and that's it, and come back. That's what's going to happen in a ball game. Fake traps. All right, here we go. Now we're going to add an occupied post. Along with this, though, when we have an occupied low post on the ball side, and Chris Carrawell's talking to, to, uh, to Trajan, he's telling him, I got help. When you hear you got help, we call it a free contest. There's no way that Shane Battier can backdoor you now, because he's there. And so Trajan's job is not to let Shane get the ball. That's, all, that's his job right now with the ball right there. Well, and he knows he can't get beat back door. Well, he should have an easier job then. You see, so we're not sloughing back or whatever. We're not following him. But this is, a, this is a good position for the defense. It isn't if Shane, if there's no talk and Shane's playing, I'm not sorry, Trajan just playing off because he's afraid of getting back doored. Then they start their offense. And so if in denial, even if you don't get the ball, but they get a pass out here, now they're trying to run their offense further out. Passes are longer. They're not in their normal area of deployment. We got a greater chance of getting turnovers. Our turnovers that we try to cause are predominantly off the ball turnovers. Not so much on the ball, off the ball. And it's because of having greater passing distance as a result of our pressure. Good, 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 good. All right, good, hold it, hold it, good job, good job. Now, it gets to be a little bumpy down there. Important teaching point. When you're doing this kind of stuff, and especially when you get into all that traffic, have your guys use this forearm to just shield themselves and where they're feeling. You can't be going out like that, that's a foul. But you can shield yourself. Most people have their hands open, they start grabbing and they start doing this. And then they start doing it with the other hand. If you have this hand out and you're down there, you, know, you can hold that bump, you can, get, you can keep your balance throughout the whole time. So the teaching of that forearm right here, not to extend it, but to use it as a bumper for you, is very important. In looking at this, understand the position of the post. The coach has the ball up on top. This is the proper position for post defense when the ball's on top. Invariably, what happens with your post, so let me take Elton's spot, with the ball there, because someone's, your big guys are talking to the ball, you end up playing in the post like this when the ball's there. And it gets you into a whole bunch of trouble. Because as soon as that pass is made, if they're able to make it, now you get caught behind. You started the race for, in the post in the wrong position. You started like you were running the mile. You got to be here like you're going to be running a sprint. So starting out here is proper position and talking. OK, good. Good job. A 
really good thing to do in teaching continuous movement in defense is a thing called we call six-point contesting. The first point is denial. Second point is fake traps as they penetrate. Third point is the man takes some low post defense. Fourth point, the man goes through, help side. He might have to fake. Fifth point is the pass for the closeout. And Shane takes away the three. And if certainly there's driving line there. The sixth point, let's get back here, you're in the middle, is the denial of the flash pivot. In other words, Trajan starts coming and Shane takes this away. We think this is a really, really good drill because, it's, because it really tells you what a guy, what a player has to do throughout an exchange. That's what you're doing. It's continuous defense. Good, good, good. Post D. Post D, good, good, go on through. Be there to help. Good, close out, get it back. Good, deny the flash pivot. Okay, good. We're in two on two on a side right now. Good drill. In the drill, first of all, we got the coach on top. We're just telling the wing, no screen downs or back picks or anything right now. Just get open with the post now. Real important right here. With the ball up on top, get back down here, Shane. Trajan's right in here now. Elton's giving him a lane, and then Trajan's trying to stay with his man. He's trying to maintain physical contact with him. He's not always going to be able to do that. The best thing is for him to make physical contact. And again, I'm seeing the ball here go on through, and don't let him get the ball. That's the very best thing. The second best thing, which just happened, is if Shane did get a little bit of a lead on him, is for him to chase him out so that now he's getting the ball facing away from the basket. So if you do get bumped down there, you're not defeated, you go to option two. And option do, two is to chase that guy so he's catching the ball going away from the basket. As he does that, then Trajan can assume a good position of, of, of pressure. That's one thing we want to do on two on two on a side. Okay, the second thing is we want to defend a screen down. Make sure we're still talking to the ball as the screen's coming down. That guy coming down, if you hear, give me a lane, he gets off a little bit. Or you create less space between you and your man and you get through there. That's the best way of doing it. The other thing that happens is that a lot of guys will start opening up and then what happens is he comes right in here and posts you. So the big guy has to be able to still be chest to chest here. Two on two on a side, defending the screen down. See the ball? Good. Okay. The final thing is a back pick. Trajan's de uh, defending. Taman comes up with a back pick. First of all, Elton is telling him, back pick, back pick. Okay, let's start out again. As he starts, just call out back. I'm denying right now. Okay, call it out. As I hear back pick, you see what I'm doing right here? Right here, I change position, and it's like getting over the top. Because he's going, I'm forcing him away. That's my first move. I'm going to jam him. When I hear back pick, go ahead, I jam. I jam right here. I, put, I can put my forearm out. Good, good. That's it. Good. That's it. We would switch on emergency. But I don't like switching too much and stuff like this because it reduces the toughness of your team. 
Good, good. Open up. Good. Another contesting drill we like is called two-man contesting. Good. That's it. Good. All right, good job. Now we have two wings. The ball's in the middle of the court, so both, both defensive players are in a denial position. Okay? As soon as Coach Snyder moves the ball, say he goes to this side, Chris Carrawell opens up, he's on the ball side. His man is two passes removed. Go a little bit lower, Corey, right there. Okay, and now we're talking to one another. Okay, if he brings it back this way, now he's coming back there. You should look at it like you're on a string with the ball. If you're playing help off the ball defense, in other words, the coach has it on top. As soon as the ball moves, whoa, yeah, I'm supposed to go this way. And I'm pointing, there's a string on my finger, and the ball, the ball keeps going. If it went to Corey, the ball would still go, I'm here. The ball goes there, okay, I'm here. The ball comes back, and I'm here. It's one of the reasons why we say point to the ball. Point to the ball. You know, the, the, the great discipline you have in man-to-man -man defense, team man-to-man, -man, is that you should know where you're at all the time depending on your man and the ball. And so you should know where those two things are all the time. Good, good, open up, good, try to get open. Open up now, William. Good, that's it, good, good, that's it. Good. Two man good contesting, we had it wide, now they start in stacks. So it's tight, okay? Now when you come out, what happens a lot of times when uh, the offensive player takes the defensive player in, the defensive player, once he gets in here, opens up, and then the offensive player beats him on the sprint out. So we're trying to look at good defense here, okay? And then come out in a closed stance to, de uh, to deny, okay? Two-man tight. Good, that's it, good, good. I like the fact of taking shots while the drill is going on. And it keeps people alert also to where they're not, they're not just playing a drill. You know, they're, they're, they're looking at the whole defense. We got two on two on top right now. To begin with, before we do anything else, let's pass the ball without intercepting it. Just pass the ball to either, side. that's it, good. Pass it back, pass it back, Corey, right back to him. Good, move. Do it again, do it again. Just so we're, 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 when the ball moves, you, you accentuate that point, okay? And so we might start the drill like that. Just, just pass it side to, you know, from one to one. Good, okay, good. live, live. And now we're going two on two live. That's it, good, Chris. Okay, back up on top. Now, let's hit wings. When JD gets the ball and they're going two on two, at any time he can hit the wing. If he does, then he's making his cut inside and we have to front the cutter. And then you can come on over and then come back out on top. Front the cutter. Okay, now that's it, good. Go two on two. Okay, and then hit a wing. Okay, go, go. That's it, good. Good, that's a good denial. This is a good teaching point. He was denying here and the ball went there. Okay, but his man came over, so he knows he's supposed to deny the pass back. And what he has to do now, though, is just get a little bit further off the ball. So again, this guy can't just drive the ball right there. So that's two on two. We're doing stuff on top. Add the wings. We're front and cutters. Okay, no, that's it, good. Go two on two. Okay, then hit a wing. Okay, go, go. That's it, good. Good, that's a good denial. Now we're doing two on two, and we're saying you can cross up on top. So JD, you have the ball. And say now you have a cross with Corey Maggette. Do that right now. Let's, on crosses, we jump switch. But we jump switch. We want to come right here. We don't want to wait for him. We want to jump switch. So now we say, let's defend the cross by jump switching. Those are automatic jump switches for us with perimeter players on, on the top. You can get six, eight guys 
moving pretty good on the perimeter. You're working with your perimeter on this end of the court. Deny, deny, William. 